you've played a young Patrick Stewart in another franchise. Don't get me going, man. I am getting you Don't going. Don't get me going. So you want in on this new Picard TV series as young Picard. Jones in for some trekking, man. Make your case to Patrick and the powers that be right now. Give us I your engagement. I will engage. take you where no Star Trek fan has gone before. <laughs> I will reveal things about Jean-Luc Picard that nobody even wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're making a case. I need your abilities to get us all out of here and show the world we exist. That sounds like the bad guys teaming up. It's good to see you, man, as always. Thank uh, you, you too. Congratulations on the new film. Cheers, man. Thank this, you. This is one of those where, I was one of those in the audience when I saw a split that literally uttered an expletive at the end of the film. It just, I couldn't believe what I was watching. That, like, oh, basically, like that's, that? yeah, oh, okay. that's how I react. Yeah. But, I, but I was gonna say, like, I, I know you, as you were in production on Split, you became aware that this was all connected to Unbreakable. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you've done a lot of cool roles. You've been a lot, a part of a lot of kind of cool Quote unquote franchises. This is added to the list? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, when I originally made Split, I was not aware that we were in a greater Shama verse. Um, there was a little clue in the script that I completely missed, and he kept making reference to it. And I was like, Jesus, he talks about Unbreakable a lot. And, <laughs> this um, guy really needs to move on. I yeah, no, I know it was a great <laughs> film, dude, but you know, you had bigger successes. Um, let it go, man. You know, what comes next? You know, look forward. And, uh, and then one day he said something a bit clearer and I went, oh, was that, what? Because he said something like, you know, if this one does really well, we could find ourselves back here with Sam and Bruce. Right. And I was like, oh, and at that moment I said, like, you got, you got, that, that's not clear in the script. You know, it's really not clear. <laughs> um, and what he ended up putting at the end of the script was so brilliant Amazing. and and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it was, it's cool to be part of something that is, is greater than that which you think originally and that greater than that which the audience thinks is originally right. and, and just to be part of something that's got a 19 year lifespan as well is pretty cool. And, and, and your performance obviously was such a, a crazy tour de force in the, in the first one and, and in this one I mean you get to play what we see I think 20 different personalities 20, yeah. although you filmed I think all 24 is that correct? No we filmed 23 okay which seems slightly perverse to me I was like when he sent me the script and there was 23 I was like you're leaving one out? <laughs> like, you're going all that way? So there's it's still like one go, we never like saw? It's like you go to the peak of the mountain, and just before you get there, you go like, I'm gonna let the next guy go. I'm just gonna go back down. <laughs> I'm gonna go back, I'm good, I'm good. I saw it, I'm good. Uh, so yeah, we, we did 23, and then by the end of the editing process, we'd cut out three of them. Got it. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any uh, input on any of the personalities, or is that all night? Like, did, were there any of them that you said, you know, it might be cool to do a riff on this? Or I had an idea that, that it would be cool. We have a character who sort of like thought he was a professional model, so he was just constantly like posing the whole time and being like. So the natural James, you know, the actual James. The actual me, <laughs> yeah, be like, it would come real naturally. Uh, that didn't appear. The characters were written by him, and then they might have got fleshed out by me and they might have had things added to them by me, yeah. but it was on the page, really. Hedwig, as we know from the last one and this one, is a pretty big fan of hip hop. Yes. No big, the dance sequence in the last one was amazing. Did you want more dancing in this one? There was a moment where uh, I sang a little bit of Drake and there was some proper good moves in that bit. And I was like, this is a really good bit. This is my dance bit, <laughs> but I'm singing Drake over it. I was like, should we do a pass where I right. don't sing Drake? For the rights and clearance kind of thing. Drake's yeah. Yeah. not going to give us this song for nothing. He was like, nah, 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 Drake will be cool. He'll be like, I was like, Drake's going to want half a million. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're not going to want to pay it. Or Universal or Disney or all three of you aren't going to want to pay it. And this cool bit's going to get cut. And that's what happened. Do, do you share Hedwig's um, sensibilities in terms of musical taste? Um, yeah, I can appreciate <laughs> it. But I'm, do you know what? I'm just not big on music at all. Really? Yeah, I'm really not. I know it's like a failing. It's like like a, you just don't listen to music. The only time I ever really feel like I rely on music is when I'm tidy in the house. And uh, I generally play the same playlist by Jamiroquai, <laughs> which is pretty great for tidying. Um, there's no segue, so I'm just going to jump in. There is no segue. There's no that. segue from Jamiroquai. No. But Star Trek, we've talked at length about how much we both love this franchise. Uh, you've played a young Patrick Stewart in another franchise. Don't get me going, man. I am getting you Don't going. Don't get me going. So you want in on this new Picard TV series as young Picard. Jones in for some trekking, man. Make your case to Patrick and the powers that be right now. Give us your make it so. Give us I your engage. I will take you where no Star Trek fan has gone before. <laughs> I, 
I will reveal things about Jean-Luc Picard that nobody even wanted to see. <laughs> I don't know if you're making a case. I will rip this character to shreds. Oh, no. Do you have a make it so in you? Do you have an engage? Make it so number one. <laughs> um, yeah, engage. D. Oh, great, hot. Um, it's good. I know it's good. It's good. Um, but he told me a really good story once about how he was also the captain of the actors on set quite often, um, some of the other cast members of Next Gen will be like, what, mm? what? <laughs> I, was bo- I was a boss. Uh, but he, when they had to do like torpedo hits or photon torpedoes hitting yeah. the Enterprise or whatever, they all had to, you know, they'd have to right. whoa, do the classic thing of like, whoa. And um, he would be in charge of setting the tone so that everybody was on the same level. And they'd be like, what do you think, Patrick? And he'd be like, oh, that's a number three. And the whole, cr- <laughs> the whole cast knew what like a number one was. So like a number one would be like, mm. And then number two would be like, <laughs> right. and then all the way up to number 10 where they're like, whoa, <laughs> and all that. It's really, really cool. Yeah. No, I'm not expecting to get a call to play Aww. the young Jean-Luc, unfortunately. I am, but um, I will be tuning in and I can't wait to see it's what he does because he's a brilliant actor and he's amazing in that role. And it's just nice that Star Trek are looking further than just a spaceship and a crew, do you totally. know what I mean? They're doing something different, that's awesome. It's gonna be him on like the, the winery, like, you know, on the plant, on, on Earth back uh, in retirement or something. Maybe, maybe, yeah, he's just like, <laughs> mm, you know, it's a good vintage. And then Serene McKellen comes in, he's like, hello, dear. <laughs> and he's like, oh, did you know, John, look, it's nice to see you. <laughs> you I come to you now at the turn of the tide. <laughs> that's, no, that's a different. I know. <laughs> um, I wanna play the young him as well. <laughs> and the young Dumbledore. <laughs> You're so, so greedy. Yeah, I know. I'm I know Jude, Jude has that, by the way. I'm going to kill him. Okay. Um, X-Men, we're going to see Dark Phoenix year, I think, fourth go around. Is that, do I have that right? Something like that? Yes. It's my fourth time playing. Everybody loves Simon Kinberg. You guys have done some additional photography. Does it feel like a different kind of a thing than the last three you've done? A different kind of vibe? It's interesting coming off the back of glass because one of the things that's been said about it is it's a more, I don't know, grounded superhero movie or something. Um, I feel like Dark Phoenix is a little bit of that too. Yeah. I think it's gone back to what I th- I've always loved about the X-Men, which is that the bad guys aren't bad guys, the bad guys are your family, right. the bad guys are your best friend, the bad guys are your brothers, the bad guys are somebody who you completely understand and empathize with, and so it makes the conflict a lot more interesting and tricky for the audience and the characters to negotiate. That's what I love about it. Uh, Simon's just a great, he's a really good guy, really good writer, but a really good director of actors too. And that's something that I think Brian Singer had always recognized in him as well. And yeah. While Simon was in no way sort of like undermining what Brian was doing, Brian was in no way scared of letting him go like, have you got something to say? Brian? Get in there and say it, you know, and totally help these actors out. God, we needed some help. Um, <laughs> But uh, so it was, it was a kind of natural progression as well. What, what do you think about the notion of X-Men joining the MCU? Would you want to reprise your character in that kind of like I mishmash? Love, or do you want to I hand love it over to somebody playing, else? I love playing Charles. Um, but you've got to write something interesting for, for you to do as an actor. You can't just keep doing the same thing again and again and again. So it may be time for somebody else to come in. Um, Marvel and Disney are very smart and they've done this excellently they seem to be on the verge of doing something new with just regardless of the x-men anyway sure which is exciting i'm excited to see that can the x-men fold into the avengers world it's essentially it's the avengers world we're talking about i don't know one of the beautiful things about the x-men and one of the things that always strikes me when the fans uh, talk to you about it is that the reason that they love it is because it has a parallel with disenfranchised with people that have been ghettoized with ethnic minorities, with um, uh, sexual minorities, with any kind of person that that mainstream society is scared of, and there are large amounts of, they get pushed down and pushed off to the sides of society, and that's what the mutants represent. They're not the same necessarily as the handful of heroes right. that are regarded as demigods in the event. And at times, of course, they are, they're not, they're fallen from that demigod kind of position as well. But um, so if you fold them in, does that then get rid of that social commentary and that, that, that thing where people who are immigrants into your country and are vilified for it can identify with mutants? People who have a different sexual preference and are vilified and scared and hide away because of it, they can identify with it. People who have a different ethnic minority and they're vilified because like mainstream society is scared of anything that's different, they can identify with the mutants. Do you get rid of that parallel or or Marvel and Disney just so smart they've figured out a way to do it and keep it all. <laughs> right. Because they seem to be really clever at it. 
Do we come back? I don't know. We're all out of contract, so we don't have to. And, uh, and I don't know, they might not ask us to. But if they did and there was something interesting to do, I'm sure we would. And if they don't, it's been a good 10 years. Last thing for you. Uh, I saw our buddy Ch Chastain recently. We talked a little bit about it, Chapter 2. Um, yeah. I, I can't wait to see this. I loved what, uh, what um, they did with the first one. But I'm, I'm curious because like, Bill Skarsgård created such an amazing character in that first film. I think what he does is pretty exceptional. I thought he was great in the first one. But when you see it on set, it's the commitment and the effort he puts into, like it's, it's crazy freaky makeup. And it might be easy to just go, oh, it's crazy freaky makeup and a funny voice. But it's truly disturbing what he's doing on set. Yeah. I'm not even, I'm told not to see even too much about it. So about him specifically, I've had like press notes saying like, don't talk too much about Bill and like, this, that, and the next That's thing. That's all you want to talk about because he's it, so amazing. It, it's, I'll say that. It's pretty disturbing just being on set with him. And I do remember at times, like, after he was doing stuff, all of us adult actors playing the losers just going, like, this is not comfortable. <laughs> and we are full of respect for this guy right now. Well, the kids in the first one, they kept away from him, like, purposefully. I so they should. <laughs> Because it's well freaky. <laughs> You're like, keep me away too. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. Um, it's always good to catch up with you, man. Thank you. Cheers, man. Um, I look forward to your spin-off film with just a model character we never saw yeah. in this one, right? Yeah, it's called The Poser. It's gonna be, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really excited Works about it. Works on a number of levels, too. Yeah, it's part of the sham affairs. Yeah, it's going to be really, really cool. See you in the next one, bud. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Charles. Appreciate it.